Welcome to the Destination Digital Tour. I am joined here by my colleague Karsten and we will be talking about digital train solutions. Karsten, what kind of special solutions do we offer? Well, Christine, digital train solutions is how we at Siemens Mobility connect the train and the wayside operation systems mm -hmm. into one single whole so that they work seamlessly together. My colleague Lars will now show you one example of what we can do with this technology. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lars, so you're the one who is operating the dashboard and you will do a live demo now. Yeah, and I will actually show you how to wake up a train from the wayside. Um, okay. So what you can do and imagine is that you have a train um, and the operator needs that train a little bit earlier than expected. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore you can actually just uh, filter and look for a train which is available, available a little bit earlier than expected. And um, then you just configure that new time to the train. So what you're doing, this train was scheduled for 5.30 in the morning. Now we schedule it for 4.30 in the morning. And then we send that information to the train from the wayside. And then it actually gets that information and it's starting its wake up process on its own. And okay. um, as soon as uh, this train said uh, 3.30 in the morning is a good time to be ready at 4.30 in the morning. So then it starts its wake up process. So the HVAC gets started, mm -hmm. the compressors get started, and also the um, passenger information system is started. And in the end, even the lights are going on and the train driver is ready to just go with this train. All right. And this actually saves money for the, uh, for the operator because um, the train driver didn't have to come earlier to the train mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in this case. Everything's done and um, easy we are to, ready to step go. on and ready to go. Yes. Perfect. Fleet control at its best by just a few clicks of a button. Right. Perfect. Thank you, Lars. Well, Karsten, um, how are operators actually benefiting from this? Well, one thing, of course, is cost, as Lars mentioned. Mm -hmm. The other thing is a lot of flexibility. Uh, you don't have to decide the night before how you're going to run your trains in the morning because you have these options available. But that's really just one example of how we're able to influence the train settings remotely from the wayside. So this is just one really visible example of a whole suite of functions that we offer along with um, IT care services to keep these functions secure and operational throughout the life cycle of the vehicle. So for operators, that saves a lot of money. It gives them flexibility. It lowers their uh, life cycle operating costs and um, it really enables them to provide sustainable transport. Mm -hmm. And additionally, the train drivers are happier because they get a bit more sleep. Indeed, in your they get to sleep an hour longer. <laughs> Isn't that great? All right, perfect service. <laughs> Thank you so much to the two of you. Great. Thank you, Christine. Thank you. We are here in the optimized life cycle lever, and with me is Svetko. He is the head of development for assisted and driverless train operations. And that sounds very promising. Svetlo, what do we actually see here? Welcome to our interactive display uh, for assisted and driverless train operations. Mm -hmm. What you can see here and what you can also partially experience here is an insight, an overview over what assisted and driverless train operation means, what benefits it provides to our customers and how it, what the path is from today's train operation until the fully automated train operation that, where we talk about driverless train operation, where there'll be really no driver in the train and the trains can operate on their own. It, on this display, we can see what trams and mainline trains are capable of doing today. Okay. How we can assist the drivers today to reduce the number of uh, collisions and to increase availability and reliability of, of uh, and safety of our um, vehicles and our um, uh, solutions. We can experience and see how a depot, fully automated driverless depot operation can look like today and um, what the path towards, as I said, to the fully driverless operation is. Mm -hmm. I hear we are market leader in this segment. What does it make that we are the leading technology provider for this? Yes, we would like to 
say that we are market leader on this field simply because Siemens Mobility has been investing for the last couple of years into an obstacle detection function, okay. which is a key technology and key function to enable driverless and assisted in driverless operations. And this obstacle detection function is based on multi-sensor fusion and data analytics. And Siemens Mobility, as I said, has put a lot of effort, has built up its own development team to push forward uh, this uh, data analytics, this digitalization solution for our trains. And from what I know, um, analysts and data, when this comes together, it needs experience and you've been working on this since when? We've been working on this since 2016, 17. Okay. One first result or intermediate display of our capabilities we have done during the last Inutrans in 2018, mm -hmm. the autonomous Siemens tram in Potsdam. Today, or during this Inutrans, we can display another development step towards driverless operations, which is the fully driverless depot automation in Potsdam. Sounds great. So we're curious to get more from that guy here. You're very welcome to receive more. Just step <laughs> by our booth and you'll get it. <laughs> All right, perfect. Looking Thank you, Svetlo. You're very welcome. We're here in the Religion X area and with me is the head of sales for digital services, Gerhard. And Gerhard, you know it, what this Religion actually is and why we're having a Religion X now. What does it stand for? Well, Religion is our application suite for digital services. And the new X in Religion stands for its, its expansion with the Siemens Accelerator. And that enables interoperability and data exchange between application and services. And actually what you can see here is uh, demo screens or touch screens where you can inform yourself of our highlight projects. And yeah, just to give you an overview, mm -hmm. Religion X is addressing basically the three key stakeholders in the rail business, which is the asset owner, the operator, and the maintainer. Now, for example, if you are an asset owner, then you might be interested in our digital asset management solution, uh, which helps you to optimize or find the right balance between performance, cost, and risk, which actually helps you to maximize the value of your assets. Mm -hmm. And if you are an operator, you will be interested in operation intelligence for fast incident management. And if you work in maintenance, then maintenance intelligence um, will help you in the transition from preventive maintenance to condition-based maintenance and to predictive maintenance. So as you can see, Religion X is already quite well on its way. Um, but we believe that we can only grow and scale Religent X or any other digital solution if customers, partners, and developers are collaborating. And Religent X is actually supporting that. And kind of brings not only advantages for the target groups you just have mentioned, in the end, the passenger is the one who contributes the most out of that. Absolutely, because mm -hmm. he needs to rely on uh, rail functioning and so that rail is the, the preferred option for mobility for our passengers. All right, so talking about this 100% availability, yeah. are there any additional benefits coming along? Yes, there are. And yeah, maybe I can ask you that. Um, for example, what do you think um, when we talk about condition-based maintenance and predictive maintenance, what is the impact on lowering the maintenance cost? Any idea? No, definitely not. I can help you. So realistically, we see a 15% decrease of the cost. Mm -hmm. And those numbers or those statistics, they actually come from our ongoing projects, which is Thameslink or in Singapore, the Land and Transport Authority or many other customers. Okay, nice. So definitely great examples, great demonstrations here as well by you and your team to be expected. So don't miss the chance to come here and learn more. We are in the area of infrastructure in the cloud and with me is Yasmin and she knows all about maximizing network capacity. Now Yasmin, can you give us 
a few details why we should maximize network capacity. Of course, then maximizing network capacity is one of the biggest challenges of our array operator. On one hand, we all know the traditional array sector, a lot of hardware, cables, point machine, exit counters, and on the other hand, we have an increasing demand for the transportation of passenger and goods, meaning more cost, more investment cost, more maintenance cost. And what we here do is, we are virtualizing all this hardware. We will bring it to the cloud and control it from one single place, independent where the data center is. It sounds easy as you explain it. Is it as easy and which benefits have come along? Yes, it's not that easy and that's why we have this exhibit to explain you all the single elements we need, like 5G, like cybersecurity, to get also known what are the benefits for the customer. Like, if for example you're using 5G, you can reduce your network cables by up to 90%. Wow. And if you're need, using 80 over ATS, you can reduce on one hand energy by 30% and on the other hand increasing the capacity also by 30%. These are impressive numbers you're bringing up here. Can we actually see that at the exhibit? Can of we try course. it? Because these are just explanations and facts, but we want to prove it. And that's why if you come over here, you can really switch a point machine over the cloud. All right. And if you want to test it, just switching on and off buttons, this is definitely the place to go. We're still in the area of maximizing network capacity and the question, how to get more passengers onto the train. And with me is Alex, he's an expert on train to cloud solutions. And as we've been talking before about infrastructure in the cloud, I am wondering how these two are connected. So infrastructure in the cloud is one key element of our train to cloud solution. What we want to showcase here on our exhibit is, we want to take our customers onto a journey. We want to take them onto a journey. How does the CBDC system look today? And how does it look in the future? And how do we, as Siemens Mobility, how do we want to shape the future? How do we think does CBDC technology looks in the future? And um, we do this by using different tokens. Mm -hmm. And these different tokens represent different subsystems. And by putting these different tokens onto the antenna, we show for the different subsystems um, how do we combine the real and digital world? How do we address topics like sustainability, efficiency? What about connectivity and life cycle costs and also passenger experience? And this is what we do for each and every subsystem. And I think this is an interesting uh, journey for the customer. And um, I think this is an innovative thing we can present, uh, how we can present ourselves. Definitely. So a lot of topics to look at and um, to kind of try out with the different tokens, get more information. You shall not miss it. Thank you. Let's talk about mobility software now. And with me is Svenja. She knows all about an optimized customer experience and processes which are actually handled by the rail operators. Svenja, how are these two actually combined? How mm -hmm. do these play together? First of all, in our portfolio, they play together very well because we have solutions for both. And to provide the perfect passenger experience, it's important that the operators are in full control of their core processes. For example, you want to provide the passenger with accurate and up-to-date information. But first of all, the operator needs harmonized mm. and up-to-date uh, data so they can uh, yeah, give it to the passenger and uh, for example even the nicest fanciest shiniest passenger app doesn't help if the train's running late so you have right. to make sure that you reduce um, delays and if there are delays that you inform the passengers very well that you have the data to do so and then <laughs> uh, you can improve the passenger experience. and even though it's different apps different companies different operators, they all play together? Our solutions play very well together, yeah, it's more like an ecosystem. All our uh, solutions are very modular, they are API driven, um, so they're made uh, to, to work with other solutions and other systems and of course our solutions. Mm -hmm. So can you give me an example how this kind of app service is going to look like 
for a passenger the ideal way. Um, something we're working on at the moment is uh, or for some years now um, is the mobility as a service um, field. Um, this means that the passenger can plan, book, pay their ride a one central hub. This is in most cases an app and um, it's across all modes. So it's seamless travel from door to door, whether it's bus plus train plus scooter or your own bike plus train plus light rail or something. It's all in one place and you don't have to uh, consult several websites to find out the best way uh, to get to your destination. It gives you more freedom. Um, Curious to, to test this. I take you by the word, yep. I'm gonna Do go that. for that. Mobility software. We're here at the center of our fantastic booth at Innotrans, at the so-called Siemens Accelerator. And with me is Philip. He Hi. knows all about it. And you can tell us now what's the secret behind the Siemens Accelerator for transport and what stands behind this magic X. So the Siemens Accelerator is our new open digital business platform that will help us accelerate the digital transformation for our customers. It consists out of three pillars. Pillar number one is our portfolio. Here you can find curated IoT-enabled hardware as well as software elements. Pillar number two is our powerful ecosystem of partners. And then thirdly, there's a marketplace to exchange, collaborate, and later on also do transactions. But uh, the core is really our portfolio, and uh, we have currently two portfolio families at Siemens Mobility, which is the Mobility Suite X, which you can see right here behind me. Mm -hmm. This is geared towards our passengers, and then we have portfolio elements from Railigent X, which is geared towards asset owners, operators, and maintainers. Any promises which come along, which we fulfill? Yeah, so with our portfolio, we're making an architectural promises to our customers, because all portfolio elements have to fulfill certain criteria to become part of the accelerator. So number one is we're going to be even more modular, meaning you can imagine the portfolio elements like little Lego building blocks. Secondly, nice. we will create APIs. These are interfaces that allow the exchange of data between hardware and software, and we will open these APIs up. And thirdly, everything will be in the cloud because this significantly lowers the entry barrier for our customers and allows for a fast rollout. It sounds very easy and simple to use these things and how everything comes together. What are the benefits for our customers? Yeah, so today in the transportation industry, we see many systems from different suppliers that are not connected. This makes it very hard to manage. And with the accelerator and the open API approach, we want to go away from these closed segregated systems towards a more open and connected ecosystem, which will eventually enable the operator to manage all of his assets centrally in one system. But this also has benefits for customers, as we can now take information about what is going on in the train and make it available to them. For example, the occupancy of a train can be used to have a more flexible seat booking experience. Okay, sounds great. Philip, thank you very much. Crisp information on the point, very energetic. Love it. Thanks. So, accelerator for transportation, definitely the place to go for. And if you can't make it to Berlin, to Hub 27, don't miss your chance to watch us daily at 3 p.m. at the Siemens Mobility Spotlight.